Hello and welcome to another episode of the Help on the Way podcast, where we'll be featuring a little ditty here from April 7th of 1995 from Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida. I am your host, Fig. As you can tell by the sound of my voice, we are gameless today. and But I am here with my fine feathered friend, Nob. Nob, would you please... Um, believe you're not a bird but if you could please confirm that you're not a bird uh and say hello to all the fans out there squawk oh squawk. he's a might be <laughs> how's it going over there i'm doing good how are you doing i'm good i'm good things are things cool. are interesting this is uh this is gonna be a tough episode i think for us not just because we are missing our co-host game <laughs> Yes. Uh, but it does make it harder for me because I I like being in the color role more than the. It's so yeah. much easier as someone really who's is. only ever been color commentary. It's it's so much easier. It is easier. Um, and games show game's up. One of the best. I monologue. I monologue about why I was underwhelmed, and then I pass it off, and then game does all the hard work. And he does it well, like you were saying before yeah. I so rudely interrupted you. <laughs> it's okay. I know, I know you would not do that with game, but... Uh, no, 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 no. Guest host, so now I get to... Yeah. No rules. Substitute teacher rules. <laughs> I'm going to throw crap at your head as soon as you turn around. Hey! Knock it off, kid! <laughs> um, no, I totally get it. It's much easier to just, yeah, throw bombs every now and then and try to be funny rather than do what game does so well, so... Uh, game. Hopefully, we will catch you next week, uh, and hopefully, we'll have a big, um, we'll have a big guest for next week. But that that remains to be seen. Let's get into our Channel Six news, uh, which is going to start and probably end on a pretty sad note. We will be well when this episode airs, which will be next week. Um, uh, you know, fans of. Grateful Dead and Jam Band and just music in general will have already known that James Casey, um, who was a multi-instrument instrumentalist, uh, played a lot of sax, a lot of different types of saxophone with Trey, Trey Band, Megan Trainer, Billy and the Kids is where I know him from best, Phil Lesh and Friends. Uh, he died uh, at the young, young age of 40 following a lengthy battle with colon cancer. And that's a battle that I didn't know about until only a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. I believe uh, during the Billy and the Kids uh, mini tour that, that you saw up in New York and, and Baltimore, there was a little bit of an interview with Billy beforehand, and he had mentioned that um, James Casey was, was too ill to join the band. And I think I may have heard something earlier, but I didn't really put it together what was actually happening or how sick uh, James Casey was. Yeah. Um, there's There's a video on YouTube where he says he has stage four colon cancer, and that's... You know, now you're talking about matters of months. Um, you know, there, there's really no chance of uh, getting it into remission once you're at that point. So uh, we're going to be talking about James Casey and and what he means. And, um, you know, he had a, a goal and a mission of uh, colon cancer awareness uh, at the end of his life as well. So we're talking about a little bit about that as well. Nob, anything you want to add uh, before we get started? Uh, I just the general I, I've enjoyed Casey's work with yeah. both Trey Band and Billy and the Kids and Phil and Friends. I, I am most familiar with his work with Trey Band probably just because the volume of Trey Band shows with James Casey is a, is a little bigger than the Billy and the Kids and, well, and Phil and Friends shows. Well, tell me about shows. that as a real novice. Um, yeah. I went on YouTube today and I saw uh, there was a YouTube video. It was Trey Band featuring James Casey. So was it kind of like a featuring thing? Like he would like sit in or he was, you know, a guest at times or was he more of the band? No, he was a he was a member of the band. He he played with them for uh, I don't know how many years when he joined the Trey band. Uh but he was a, a member of their their horn section. They would have well have had, I don't know. But they had Jennifer Hartswick on trumpet, Natalie Cressman on trombone, and James Casey would join them on saxophone. Um, in the last couple of years with Casey's uh, uh, cancer battle, uh, he wasn't at every show and sometimes would only come out for a couple of songs uh, as a, a guest. I know there's a show in October of 2021 at Radio City Music Hall uh, that's 
just beautiful. He plays the hell out of saxophone solos on uh, a lot of the newer Trey songs like Evolve and uh and Life Beyond a Dream and stuff. Um I I he's he and Trey had brilliant musical chemistry. It was always a joy watching the two of them play together and push each other to do different things, take it bigger and bigger and there would always be a big smile on on both of their faces right. when they played together. Um, well, that's that's kind of, uh, you know, the general look of Trey, though. He kind of just has yeah. a creepy smile as he's playing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, once I heard that James Casey passed, I um, I went and got my, the only piece of media that I really have connected with uh, James Casey, um, which was the Billy and the Strings show from... July 13th, 2021, I think it was the second show of that Red Rocks run. Mm -hmm. And I bought it on Nugs. And then I went into Nugs.com and I was like, I'm going to listen to the show. And it was like, oh, you need the app to listen to it. And I was like, really? I need the app to listen to it. So then I downloaded Nugs on my phone and I was listening to it. And it's phenomenal. It really is. Um, uh, James Casey was that featured... the one with the Peggy O? Was uh, that the other night? I think uh, there there is a Peggyo this night. Uh, I didn't get okay. that, but yeah. he does sing "My Sisters and Brothers," and mm -hmm. you know it was it was very touching and it was very nice to hear his voice and an incredible voice as well as you know saxophonist, yeah. multi instrumentationalist, and um, he was really an incredible talent and he brought a lot to that show, uh, which is you know one of the best shows that I've heard out of any you know Grateful Dead uh, kind of act in a very long time. So, you know, that was kind of how I was eulogizing him this morning. Yeah, and what especially stood out to me, because, like, we, you know, we as, as fans, as, as listeners, as audience, whatever you want to call us, yeah. like, we, we get to know them as musicians. We get to know them as players. And you're going to be hard-pressed to find someone who can argue against James Casey's chops. We all know that he's a very yeah. good saxophone player. The big thing that really got me was in all of the, the, the social media tributes to him, whether yeah. it was Trey, whether it was Bill Kreutzmann, whether it was Billy Strings, O'Teal, like people from across the board of the jam band world, like everyone highlighted that he was one of the kindest people, one of the most fun people to work with, to play with. Uh, in a business where you don't always have to be kind to make it, uh, Casey seemed to be just an incredibly kind person at all times and that's just something to commend yeah we have uh eulogy pouring in from all around the music world including from uh trey anastasio saying james was a magnificent soul his spirit and personality glowed his playing was elegant stormy soulful and lyrical he was a powerful and melodic improviser and spot on when reading intricate charts his tone was full and warm his singing voice was beautiful. I loved harmonizing with James. His smile filled the room. Um, I liked. I I did like. Um, so I listened to Trey um, and James play, and I I did like James's choice of. Uh, or yeah, Casey Casey James's choice of uh, baritone sax. I mean, that's a that's cool to bring out the baritone. You, you kind of hear more of an alto usually. Um, yeah. And I love the sound. I love the sound that uh, Casey was getting out of it too. Um, really just an incredible talent that was taken away from us, uh, too short. And, you know, that kind of does dovetails with the mission that, uh, Casey created for himself, uh, towards the end of his life, which was colon cancer awareness. Uh, he was, uh, an advocate, uh, for proactive testing for colorectal cancer, which he noted, uh, there's a YouTube video uh, where he talks about this. I think he was on the Today Show as well. Colorectal cancer disproportionately affects black men. Um, and, you know, viewers might, or listeners might recall that Chadwick Boseman died of uh, colorectal cancer as well. Uh, he said it was something that he didn't know about. He didn't know about his cancer history. And uh, in the video, he said that colon cancer is preventable, and it's preventable by catching it early, by getting it tested. So, you know. Uh, if, if colon cancer is in your uh, history and, and you are someone, you know, who has access to healthcare like that, absolutely, um, you know, totally identify with what Casey was saying there. And then you want to talk about the uh, the fundraiser, the GoFundMe. 
Yes, there's there was a GoFundMe that was going around before James Casey passed as well um, to support him and his family and yeah i i don't know it it's it it's been very sad everything that has happened but it has been i don't know nice to see the outpouring of support the fact that this gofundme has raised two hundred fifty thousand dollars now and i i wasn't you know keeping I wasn't given day to day checks on the James Casey GoFundMe, but like yeah. seeing that there are recent mil, donations of ten thousand dollars and and things like that, like it's very, it's just nice to see this community come together and support someone who has meant so much to so many people. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, um, so we're gonna move on from uh, from this topic, and I'm afraid that. The next topic is is not uh, is is also somewhat of a downer as well. Uh, this is April anniversary. 7th. <laughs> Van- well, I was going to skip Vanetta. All right. <laughs> I think we did a Vanetta anniversary last last summer. Last year when the anniversary year. came around. Yeah, yeah, happens every. It year. feels like it feels like Vanita Day comes earlier and earlier every. Yeah, that's right. It's really just like a Hallmark holiday at this point. <laughs> yeah. Like, you gotta get your card with the naked guy on it. I get it. Last naked year someone guy. sent me a, a beer koozie with naked guy on it. Oh. Which was that's kind. Cool. And appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll skip the Vanita talk and we will talk about April seventh of nineteen ninety five. Don't have much to say about this show. Um I listened to it a few times. Um I I kind of have to just reserve most of what my thoughts were, but um, I think we can just try to get through this review pretty quickly. Let's talk about the first set. We have Jack Straw opener into Peggio, into Rooster. We have a Loose Lucy, and then we have Aces back to back with some Dylan. We get Masterpiece into Visions of Johanna, and the first set ends in Promised Land. Um, Nob, why don't you? Tell us your thoughts on the first set of April 7th, 95 in Tampa. Sure. Um, I, uh, I wasn't huge on it. Yeah. Um, no, I was, I mean, I like, you know me, I like the Grateful Dead and I need to clarify this whenever the reviews get a little negative, but I, I was just sure. generally pretty bored with this one. I yeah. kind of, I almost wanted it to be worse. Like it wasn't interestingly bad. It was just fine, but not good fine. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Jack Straw to open. The energy is generally good. They were trying yeah. to keep the energy high since it was the opener and this being 90s dead. As soon as they could, they were going to get mellow and slow with it. Um, the Jack Straw didn't quite come together for me. The vocals don't really blend. A lot of the instruments aren't quite fitting together. I even switched which tape I was listening to a couple of times, being like, is it something with the mix? But it never quite came together. Almost a little too much forward drive that it almost felt like the parts were like tripping over each other's feet. Wasn't quite working for me. Um, Peggio was better i don't know there's a good tempo on peggio that kept him from getting too slow um despite being on the faster side for peggio it had a a, the patience and interplay that i i respect the dead for uh despite some sloppiness on the song part uh the first peggio solo has a really nice garcia medley um yeah, I mean, besides the usual, there's nothing particularly wrong about this little red rooster, but there's also nothing particularly inspiring about it. Uh, Jerry solo meanders a little. Uh, Bobby goes to the high note too soon. He does it on like the first loop of the twelve bar blues instead of the second, like he usually does. And I Jerry seems, yeah, Jerry seems to try cutting him off, but Bobby <laughs> will not be stopped. Um, the highlight of this this rooster, in my opinion, is the Vince solos. Uh, he does the first one on like piano, and then the second one on organ, and it's a really cool sound. Um, Luce, Lucy is probably my delight within this first set. Um, 
the drummers keep things pretty lively, which is nice. Jerry sounds more alive than the previous song. Uh, it's the closest I come to vibing in set one. Um, Masterpiece is fine. I mean, everything is, like, fine. Um, uh, Bobby sounds nice. I don't nice. have much more, so don't, don't think that you're selling it short or you're not using the right sure. words. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to elaborate. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby sounds nice on this masterpiece. Uh, there's a pretty Garcia solo. I'm kind of missing the harmonies on this one. There's usually a nice energetic Jerry harmony that adds a little, like, extra kick to masterpiece. Uh, that was missing here, and it didn't really do it for me. Um, I, okay. Everyone who, whenever I read things about this show, everyone's like, it was kind of dull, but the saving grace is the visions of Joanna. And I was not sold by this visions of Joanna. Mm -hmm. I like the song. I like when Jerry does the song. This one did not do it for me. Um, I appreciated that there was a very Dylan-y delivery. Uh, Jerry definitely had fun with not having to sing the notes and could lean into that in these visions of Joanna. Um, yeah. That's nice. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I'm working on a show about that's vaguely about Bob Dylan right now, so I've been doing the voice a lot this month. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it generally stayed in kind of a samey world, which didn't yeah. really... But I will say that Jerry is probably the most on in all of set one on the visions of Johanna. And the last verse comes together. Like, it sticks the landing. There's some really nice playing around with dynamics. There's this nice little explosion of sound towards the end that I really enjoyed. And then a nice transition into a passable promised land. It's, it's fine. It's, it, it's not good, but it's some of the closest that this set comes to being good um so that's the nicest things i have to say about set one what did you think fig well i appreciated your disclaimer that you actually do like the grateful dead uh because i will echo People said disclaimer. always forget that yeah yeah i mean you know it's tough what we do because you know we don't get to choose and every once in a while you will get you know, a 95 show that just, you know, that's that's like this one where it's just tough to do what we do for this kind of 95 show. Maybe it was a fun time, like, you know, being there. And I think we have some Reddit comments about people who were there. But, you know, that thrill, you know, that you get from live music does not transfer uh, onto the tape, um, of, you know, and the, and the playing just was not there in Tampa. Um, Jack Straw, I thought was distant. I, I wanted to like it, but it didn't really have a you know core to it peggy o i said was a bouncy jaunt uh nice. jerry however just sounded old and and again distant like it was just they weren't present um we got little red rooster i gave jerry a big plus for his slide solo loose lucy uh yeah i guess it was good i don't have much to say about it i also think it's creepy that they brought that back so late in their career um masterpiece i thought was decent vision of johanna was it's not one that i'm terribly familiar with i mean clearly i know I, I don't know the dylan song or dylan version of it i know the dead do it and i believe uh, according to your stats this is the first visions of johanna that we've had it yes. just did nothing for me i just thought it was long it was just a long slog of a song that that you know based on where i'm coming from was it wasn't doing anything for me Promise Slam was a fun way to end set one. I thought it was the best song of the night so far. I give Prince Vince a big plus for his uh, key solo. Let's jump into set two. We get eyes into Saint to start things off. And then Aww. just a real head scratcher of the rest of the set. Samba in the Rain. Unbroken Train into... Uh, I'll, let me go back. Unbroken Chain into Corina. Into Drums in Space. Into Easy Answers into Days Between, into Not Fade Away. And for an encore, we had the U.S. Blues. And I'm just going to start and, and yeah. do my little thing, because I don't have much. Uh, but that, I'm getting PTSD from that uh, Dark Star show that I saw last summer, which mm. was a lot of those similar songs strung together in the second set. And me just, again, scratch my head like, I don't want to hear Samba in the Rain into Unbroken Chain into Karina. Um, I didn't really want to hear it from 4795 either. Um... Eyes, I wrote, was easy listening. It was a nice little mm. easy listening bop. Saint was meh, to borrow games. 
And then Samba, Chain, Karina, I, for each one, I just wrote, I just can't. Jumps in Space, I skipped. Easy, I said, not this either. Days Between, not Fade Away, U.S. Blues, I got nothing for. So I'm quick this, this time around. Go ahead, Nob. Sure. I'll speak uh, a little slower. <laughs> um, yeah, it, yeah. What a, yeah. Uh, um, what the hell do you say about this thing? Um, set two is the second set of April 7th, 1995. <laughs> um, Fact. And I think the highlight of set two is the eyes of the world. That That is, to me, that is the only song that I enjoyed listening to probably this whole night. Um, had an old school, slower feel, uh, which was kind of nice to play around with. Uh, it, I was especially enjoying what Vince added to this. Yeah, my note that I wrote down was grading on a curve. This is the best one. <laughs> Jerry doesn't sound too bad. It's got a good groove, and there's some nice, if not amazing, solos. It doesn't justify being 16 minutes long, and I'd never call this an all-timer, but within the show, without hesitation, this is the best one. Um, and then a fun transition to Sane of Circumstance. I don't know. Bobby gives it his all, but the drums really aren't doing it for me on this one. They were taking me out of it. The MIDI sounds were interesting and not quite grating, which was nice. Um, and then came Samba. This was our first time talking, or at least having a, a show with Samba in the rain on it. We've probably talked about it before, because it's a, a little bit of a meme song among the deadheads. I'm not a total Samba in the rain hater. Um, I think there are some, like, fun... It's never going to be one of their best songs. Uh, but I think when the like stars align and the the inspiration hits them just right and the music plays the band, there are some fun. I can get down with a fun samba in the rain. Uh, like long way to go home. I'm kind of confused why it's a set two song, but whatever. Um, I also I also think Vince, it's you know yeah okay so yeah I also think it's really interesting how much Vin Vince's compositional style relies on 90s dead nailing four-part harmonies because <laughs> both yeah, long way to go home there. and samba in the rain have these really crunchy yeah. chords that when you get them right are very cool and interesting mm. and when you get them wrong are not and, and from what i have heard era, yeah they, they get them wrong more that, than they get them yeah. right um yeah this is one of those samba it doesn't really do it for me uh yeah. The synth solo is a little grating. Jerry solo, a little lost. There's a clean ending, if I can say one nice thing about it. They really nail that. Um, yeah, Unbroken Chain is a good song that was not done good. Uh, uh, Phil doesn't sound particularly great. The band kind of goes in and out of nailing the instrumental part. It wasn't a total train wreck, but it wasn't correct. Uh, and it kept kind of jumping between those two worlds, and that was something to hear. Um, and then, I don't know how, but somehow those Karina harmonies sounded even worse than the Samba in the Rain harmonies. Don't know what happened there. Um, I will say that the jam of Karina is actually pretty fun. This would be, again, we're grading on a curve, but I would consider this Karina to be among the highlights of this show. Um, I think the jam keeps it lively, and none of the sounds are too offensive. Um, I also skipped drum space. I, I got thrown, because tr the tape I was listening to mislabeled the tracks and had all of drum space listed as drums, and I just saw 26-minute drums, and I went, I can't do this. I really can't do this. Um, but it wasn't a 26-minute drums. It was a 26-minute drum space. <laughs> Which I still can't do, but that's vaguely better. Um, yeah, Easy Answers is also a song that they played. Um, I'm pretty sure that Bobby was a beat ahead of the rest of the band for like the whole intro. And then as soon as the verse starts, the whole rest of the band goes, Oh shit, we're either Bob's ahead or we're behind. And they kind of quickly recover, but it's still rough. <laughs> I, I can like, I can feel the synths somehow get more annoying the longer the song goes on. Like, it was definitely a better song in minute two than it was in minute nine. But, 
regardless. There's also, I cannot, Vince is teasing something in easy answers, and I cannot put my finger on it, and it has been bugging me. This little chord thing, and it's not a dead tune. It is something, and I do not know what. And if you, dear listener, know what Vince is teasing in easy answers, please email us at helponthewaypod at gmail.com, and we'll give you a secret prize. Um, <laughs> and thank, thank you for not asking me to re-listen, because I, I will not. No, 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 no. That's, that's exactly why I'm putting it on the listeners. We've already heard it. We're not doing it again. But you, chumps, if you want to listen, <laughs> well, we're gonna make be you our listen. guest. Um, maybe, that's, maybe we'll do set two just so that we can answer <laughs> Nob's question there. Oh, man. Yeah, listen to the uh, eyes and then skip too. about an hour to the easy <laughs> answers so you can hear what Vince is teasing. Skip about that. And then just stop listening. Um, <laughs> Win your prize and get out of here. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, days came next. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know if these are opinions at this point so much as I'm just saying facts. Uh, I wasn't super into the days between. Um, Jerry doesn't seem to know the words, and this song is very lyrically heavy with the music being as repetitive as it is. Like, what I come to days between for are the beauty of Hunter's words. And I did not hear all of those words this time around um i will say that days between probably has jerry's best solo of the night it's not super it's not like an all-timer it's not a crazy ripper but it is moving and beautiful in a way that jerry garcia at his best can do and that was really nice to hear not fade away is fine (laughs) some strong caterwauling on the harmonies from vince like i don't i don't know man it went on for 11 minutes and I like barely generated an opinion on it. I tried yeah. very hard. I tried. I really did. I appreciate the um, try. Thank but you. I, I was thank there you. with you. It was like, you know, I got to a point, I, I listened to it twice. I got to a point. Where I was like, I can't listen to this a third time. Cause it bums me out. And I also don't, yeah. think gonna, I also did not believe that I would assess an opinion listening to it again. Yeah. To the whole Agreed. Thing. It just, it just happened. It was just stuff. Ugh. <laughs> okay. Continue. Um, yes, please. Yeah, U.S. Blues. Slightly sloppy U.S. Blues, a little bit slower than I like. It doesn't quite have that, like, piss and vinegar energy that I usually like from U.S. Blues. Uh, But the energy is, like, it's not bad. It's a better energy to close than the Not Fade Away was, uh, which kind of just fizzled out. This one at least, like, ends strongly. I'm not huge on the slide that Bobby is adding to this song. I usually don't mind when Bobby does, like, backup slide. I don't like slide solos, but backup slide is usually fine. This is not one of those times. And then this is another one that I really liked what Vince was adding in the keys. I did not like what Vince was adding in the harmonies. Um, Yeah, all in all, I listened to this show, and I would not recommend listening to it but please stay tuned dear listener so that well, you can listen to it and and maybe <laughs> form your own opinion oh there you go there you go all right now slight editorial note um between the podcasters here knob do you have a call that you need to take uh yeah, uh i i moved it by about 10 minutes all right excellent so let's continue let's wrap up well actually we have a lot of comments here but we'll try to wrap you up book of the dead so Typically, it's just, you know, is this the best of the best? And Nob already answered that it's not any good. So I'm just going to go ahead and... I said yes. What if after all of that, I was like, yeah. What I, game chimes who, in? who've been yelled at for calling Meet Up at the Movies unlistenable, I'm putting <laughs> this 95 show as one of the greatest shows The Grateful Dead ever played. Uh, then we would have to uh, resend your uh, journalistic credentials at this point. Uh, and I think that would be fair. Yeah, there are yeah. a couple 95 shows I might put in the Book of the Dead. That that 95 March Spectrum run is very good. Mm. Uh, but this is this is not a show that I would even consider. Yeah. Okay. Except so for I would concur, not Book of the Dead. Now, what set? Because I um I had put down one. I just assumed because uh. Samba Chain Karina, 30 Minute Dark Star, Easy Answers. But I guess I am curious um, what your answer is, because I'm, I'm just not sure from your uh, review. Oh, no. So enlighten us. Yeah. Uh, go to a coin flip if you didn't agree. No, I, I think the answer is set 
one. I think set two has the best song of the night in Eyes of the World, but it also has like three of the worst songs of the night in the form of Easy Answers, Unbroken Chain, Samba. Like it's just yeah, I I would. Um... Yeah, I see. I I wouldn't even at least again. We're grading on a curve here. Karina is far from the most offensively bad part of this set for me. Like this would, if I was ranking from from bottom to top, mm. Karina would comfortably be in the middle, just because it sounds much much better on the ears than Easy Answers does. But I've always I'll thought take... that Karina is the best of Bobby's '90s tunes. Oh, I can't do Karina. That one is grading. All right, yeah. MVP. I will. I will start because yeah. I wasn't sure, and then I got. Uh, oh, well. Let me finish off the last segment here. So, uh, dear listeners, stay tuned. After we're done talking, you will hear set one from April seventh of nineteen ninety five. Uh, MVP. I got. I just got a flash of brilliance. Um, that my MVP for the night is going to be Bob Dylan, because nice. we have two Dylan songs, and I don't. I don't know who else to give it to within the band. Nob? Yeah, I, I. You can see, choose despite Bob Dylan, also. No, I'm not gonna choose Bob Dylan. I'm gonna choose Joan Baez. Um, no, I'm going to say, despite having some occasional gripes with the harmonies that he was adding, musically, I found myself drawn most to my cousin Vinny. Um, <laughs> Prince Vince, it is. I think we've already used that one as a show title, but I would, I would actually. I would, oh, my cousin Vinny, we have, we have. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but we could do Prince Vince. Okay, so we have a, Vinny too. interestingly, we have a number of Reddit comments, like a lot for ninety-five. Typically, we're lucky to have one or two, but for a ninety-five show, we have plenty. Um, we'll start with uh. Redditor Infallible Backstairs, uh, who just writes Samba, and then it's the throw-up emoji, <laughs> which is pretty on point. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read Connect Glass 4036. Holy crap, this is actually a great show. Wow. I don't see any actual sarcasm here, so let's keep reading. When listening, though, I'm stuck with many thoughts, the first of which is how killer everyone except Jerry sounds. This is a great band that's really cooking. That Jack Shaw opener is awesome, and they're all throwing down hard. It could be said that even Jerry plays well at points. My second thought is, imagine how effing good that band could have been if Jerry was healthy. Vince is effing on point, and the vocals sound awesome. Third, I, beca- I become rather significantly disgusted and disappointment- disappointed in the others for letting that happen to Jerry. Like how, that's such bullshit, hippie ethos, non-interference, F that, you let your friend die. That's that's an interesting point. Uh, I'm not going to get into the next paragraph here because we go on um, tangents outside the boundaries of April 7th, 1995. But thank you. Um, geez, I really went places. Uh, thank you, Connect Glass, for the first half of your comment. Go ahead, Nob. Sure. Um, then our pal Acturian Ally. Ally of the Acturians, Arcturian? I don't know. Uh, um, writes, Make no apologies, Samba, Karina, and Cheesy Answers are all good songs. Now, uh, I, love, I love that comment because by calling it Cheesy Answers, it undermines everything that Arcturian yeah. Ally just said. And I yeah, love like that because now I don't know what their point is. <laughs> no, for real. It's really damning with faint praise there. Um yeah, my, my dad and his friends used to call easy answers cheesy answers and still do to this day. They were very much people who would groan when that song came it's a cheesy up. Cheesy song. It is. Oh yeah. Though, I mean at the end of the day, you don't have to say a word if you don't got dick to say. As the great Robert Hunter once wrote. Well, that's what surprises <laughs> me about Samba in the Rain, too. Just like it starts off. This is a this is a Robert Hunter uh lyric. It just starts yep. off just so off putting. 10 and 10 is 30, okay, like, 1 and 1 is 3 from the Beatles, I kind of get that. If you tell me it is so, okay, there's a weird little meter thing going on there. And then, let's get down and dirty, baby, let's get sweet and low? It's like, <laughs> ew, like, like vomit emoji. I think he means totally. it like the sugar packets. Oh, clearly he's talking about saccharin. Uh, 
because he's concerned about your glycemic index. Not um, oh, oh, all right. Let's just let's just continue. Um, let me let's see here. Um, uh, next we've got Brad. Brad oh, Brad K. Brad K. Probably not Brad. K. Brad K. One one zero nine eight wrote. I, I, was I hope there. you weren't born on January tenth, ninety eight, because that's very specific. Yeah. Brad K. Uh, imagine being born in January of the late nineties. Couldn't be me. <laughs> um, I I well, was there. Wasn't. Right, because they weren't there. They were there. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Unless they they mean like in utero or something. But even then, that'd be three years before. I'd be very impressed. That's like elephant gestation. Um. <laughs> Anyway, a point. <laughs> um, they yeah, write, I was, I was there on the floor with my wife who hates jam bands, but I digress. Five Bobby was the MVP for the show, hands down. But the song of the night was Visions of Joanna. Of the few times played in 95, for me, this was the highlight. Jack Straw and Peggy O nice, eyes nice, unbroken chain, good, rest, eh. Not the best show I've seen, but enjoyable night. And I can it's believe that. We weren't there. We can't tell you what it was like from the ground, but I can believe that this is, there are far worse shows in 95. This isn't one yeah. that I'd leave like grumbling about, except for, uh, and again, yeah, if you're there, it may have been a lot of fun. Yeah. And, you know, maybe you were, you know, just partying and, and, and you could get through, uh, uh, easy, cheesy answers, but I like the delivery. That was very gaming of your delivery there. Thank you. Eyes nice. I mean, he said, yeah, as soon as he said rest, eh, I was like, rest this is in. game. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about Deadco Mule, frequent commenter to the thread. Hippie John's last show, with Jerry at least, I shared a J with this old head John during the set break of the 21 Dead & Company Spock show. His first show was in 80, and this Tampa 95 show was the last time that he saw Jerry. Uh, he said he was very glad he went. Cheers to you, John. More of the story. If you're ever on the fence about seeing these musicians, if the logistics and budget allow for it, go see the show. Maybe the last time. I don't know. Yeah. Why don't you bring us on home? You truly never know. I mean, yeah. Sorry. Goes to not show. To, yeah. Not to, not to jump back to being sad about the passing of James Casey, but sure. I saw a Trey Band about a month and a half ago, uh, and it was one of the last times that... that James Casey played with Trey Band, uh, and uh, like even going in, to, like I don't even know what my point is here, but it was. Well, it's I'll, just... I'll jump in. You know, you could see the the cancer taking a toll on his looks, and I'm, I kind of want to know if you agree. I mean, I, I've seen. I remember during the um, uh, during the billion billion the kids shows in. Uh, Hawaii. He was he was a pretty beefy dude, pretty muscular yeah. guy. And th and then uh, the videos that I saw of his, of you know the more recent videos. I mean, yeah, he just looks he looks wasted. He looks like someone who's was... telling something very serious. Um, yes. Is that was that your thoughts seeing him live? Yeah, like we were all. Yeah. yeah, there was there was a, a hope that he was going to be able to bounce back because you I don't know you always have to sure. hope that. Yeah. Um, but he was. He was just looking in rough shape, and he only came out to play during the encore. They had his yeah. saxophone saxophone out on stage all night because he was with them in spirit, which I thought was a nice touch. But he came out, yeah. and they sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which was fraught. Like, emo like it was just heavy emotionally. Right. It was very good. Uh, but you could, you could hear it was a very just emotional encore. And then they uh, played a first tube, which was just very cool getting to hear Casey and, and Trey do those little harmonies together. I just, yes. I don't know, just like they say, you never know when it's going to be the last time getting to see somebody live. So see as much right. live music as you can if there's a takeaway from this episode. Let it be that. Absolutely. Good call. Uh, and another takeaway is our next show, because this train keeps a trucking. Uh, May 3rd of 87, we go back to Oakland, back to home court, uh, territory at the Henry J. Kaiser Convention Center. Uh, this is an 87 show, and I guess maybe to Nob's point too, this is very soon after Jerry uh, came back from his health scare, right? Yeah. Jerry, the first post-coma show for Jerry was December of 86, so this would have been about four oh, okay. months back. Okay. Um, and this is also a Mardi Gras show, so there is a Mardi Gras band that, that plays with them, and we got some cool stuff. Um, Mighty Quinn opener. Uh, yeah. Tons of Steel, so we got a little bit of a Brent show going on, and uh, 
Drums and Ico Ico. Another Ico Ico set to starter. Very interesting. Yeah. Saint and Parapin and the drums. Very cool stuff. And we may, Knob, have a special guest what? for that show. So stay tuned. Is it game? I would hope so. <laughs> um, well, I do hope so, because this is hard. And game does it so well. So with that, let's wrap up. I want everybody to uh, smash that subscribe button. Please like and share with any of your friends or family who may or may not like The Grateful Dead. You can find us wherever podcasts are downloaded, but not the ones that loosely rhyme with ready or not, a ready or notify. Wow. Ready or not. Okay. Let me read this again. So you can find us anywhere that podcasts are downloaded, but not the ones that loosely rhyme with ready or not, hey, ready or notify. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, Solid Karina reference there. Oh, I, I would have no idea. My brain just kind of shuts off when they start singing. Oh, ready or not, hey, oh, okay, I see that. Yeah! That's a rhythm, that's a it on rhythm pattern to me. That's I didn't just yeah. write some, some random shit on the I, thing. I was going to take your word for it. Uh, you can find us on the web at helponthewaypod.podbean.com. That is our website. You can also help find us on helponthewaypod at gmail.com. Reddit.com slash r slash Grateful Dead is our home base. Uh, we have a sticky thread that you'll see right when you see on the splash page for the Grateful Dead subreddit. And I believe we're starting a little YouTube portion of this uh, little project here. So stay tuned for that. Um, if I'm sure there's something up on YouTube dot com slash the um help the way pod so with that knob do you have anything else that you'd like to say to our dear audience no i mean you don't gotta say a word if you don't got dick to say as the great poets once wrote yep and i got nothing to say about that so thanks everybody and stay tuned for set one of april 7th 1995 
catch a Detroit lighting out of Santa Fe. Great Northern, out of Cheyenne, from sea to shining sea.
old streets of Rome are filled with rubble. Ancient footprints are everywhere. You could almost think that you see in double on a cold, dark night on the Spanish side. Gotta hurry on back to my hotel room Where I got me a dead new Botticelli's knees She promised she'd be right with me When I paid my Dodging lines, less than waste of time. Oh, who's mighty king of the jungle? I can hardly stand to see it.
men that she herself cares for him. And Madonna, she still has not shown. See this empty cage now corrode. Where her cape of the stage once that flow. The villain now stares at the road. Writes everything's been returned, which is old. On the back of the fish truck that loads, while my conscience explodes.
We'll be back in just a little bit.